Today we're going to play a little game called Cringe or Not Cringe as I take an in-depth critical look at the very first mini-comic I ever made. <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome mad creators to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. Before all that stuff, I made many comics. That was one of my first forays into doing comics. Some of the comics that I make do feature robots, aliens, zombies, and all that stuff. But the one I'm going to talk about today, this one here, the very first mini comic I ever made, features a hero with a whip-like tail that could slash through his villains. And it was kind of crazy, And uh, but that's what I was all about way back in the 90s when I created this. So it's going to be fun for me to kind of take a look at this and, and give it a little bit of an analyzation. Is that a word? I don't know, but I'm going to... I am going to analyze this book, put it under the microscope, and see is it is it cringe or is it uh, is it all right? I don't know. <laughs> Find out. But before we do, oh well, that's something else. Before we do, we've got mail. So let's check here the vacuolic system, the way we get mail here in the underground layer, and it looks like it looks like we do have something that very could well be a mini comic. Oh, cool. So this is from Frank Salazar. If you guys are any way active on this channel, any of the live streams or anything, I'm sure you're familiar with Frank. He's always there. He's a big supporter of the channel. He's always, not only my channel, but my friend's channel and everything. So it looks like he may have sent one of his mini comics. So I'm going to check it out. Oh, look at that. All right, very cool. We have some hand colored mini comics, and that's what, what I really love about mini comics is that you can do anything you want. You can personalize them. I've got some, looks like some sketch cards in here and Captain Goggles and Mask Woman. Look at this. This Oh, there's there's tons of stuff in here. Here's another one. Look at all this artwork. The, and that's the cool thing is I have I've kind of watched Frank grow as an artist and he's gotten just he's just doing amazing stuff the what he's putting out there and it's just getting better and better all the time and that's one of the things I want to talk about because mini comics is a great introductory to just get into making comics and doing so doing a lot of these these mini comics you start to see so much improvement and you're gonna see improvement even in my work the one that I'm gonna show you the one that I that I picked out that I'm gonna go over compared to the kind of stuff and the kind of mini comics that I'm doing doing nowadays that is what's so great about mini comics but yeah these are great i love when and when you talk about mini comics they can be any any size you want i love these little small pocket size one that you can fit in your wallet and it, it, they work out great because you can send them through the mail with just a regular postage stamp you can they're about sketch card size or you can go with a little larger size anything you want i've done tons of not tons but I, i've done at least three or four videos just on mini comics how to make them showing some of my mini comics off but this time i'm gonna actually go and we're gonna dive into this particular book and see uh what we, we can mine from uh, the experience of, of just starting out and where you can start from and where you can end up. And I think that's a good thing to talk about. So let's get into it. All right, so here it is. This is my first mini comic. And I may have shown this on a previous video. I can't remember. But uh, I want to go a little more in depth. and I want to show how this sort of came to be and what led up to that. Um, and the main reason why I want to do this is just to show that everyone has to start somewhere. And usually when I put these videos up showing my old artwork, I, I get a lot of comments like, man, your artwork as a kid was way better than mine is now, or, or comments like that. And I just, another reason why I want to do this is just to let people know that everyone kind of levels up differently. But if you keep working at it, and I, up until this point, you know, as a kid, I was drawing all the time and just to reach what level this is. And and when I look back at it, I mean, this I guess it was OK for for where I was at that point. But you always get better and you always improve. So I want to show you the different iterations of of what became this particular book and let you know that even from from this point on, uh, I just kept getting better and better because it's if you work all the time at a craft, uh, in this case, comics, you are going to get better. You, there's no way you can 
put in the time and not get better. So I just want you to know that uh, as we dive into this. And usually when I look at these, I, I kind of have a little chuckle, and I may do that here. But I'm going to try to appreciate it for what it what it is and where I was at this time. So this the comic is called Manhunter Creature of the Night. It it changed names a few times, and I'll get a little into that. And it was just a black and white comic. I actually filled the color in here with just a just a marker. Uh, printed it on just regular, this is I, some kind of gray stock that I got. I uh, had my long arm stapler, I get. I must have had one, or maybe I took it to like a Kinko and used theirs, because I don't remember having one back then. But, uh, but yeah, this is my first foray into creating a mini comic. And, uh, and the goal was, and back then we, we called these things ash cans, and the idea was just to pitch the story and hopefully sell the story. Uh, in this case, I was trying to sell an original idea, which didn't always go over that well. I guess when I was pitching this, it was the early 90s. This was right around, I, th I can't remember if this was before, or right around the time that image, the image boom and everything. So anyway, just know that, know that's where we are in time and everything, and you'll kind of get an idea of that from the style that I was going for. Very different from anything that I would do now. Um, but so, so Private Justice, the idea behind this character, how it evolved was, he's basic. he's sort of a cross between, well, it was inspired by the Dead Zone. If you ever seen Stephen King's Dead Zone, where this guy has vision, he, he gets in an accident, he goes into a coma when he wakes up, he has these he has these visions and he can see the future and I thought wow that's really I love that movie but I thought well, what if you use that to sort of fight crime I mean he did sort of use it to to benefit people and everything in the story but but uh, what if he actually became a superhero with that sort of power so it was kind of the same origin story where uh, I forgot exactly what happened but he was in a coma he woke up and he had powers it's pretty much a ripoff which which we do a lot at that time talking about image you can go back and you can see where a lot of the image characters Characters were derived from other stuff that was already kind of being done by Marvel or DC. They just did it a lot more dynamically and everything. But anyway, so he he's actually and it's he's so he's a kind of a cross between I forgot I forgot what John Smith like was it Smith was the character from Dead Zone I don't remember exactly, but uh, and and of course uh, he's also a lawyer. And he bears some resemblance to, he's kind of a cross between Black Panther and, uh, and Daredevil. So, kind of a Matt Murdock type character. Not, he's not blind or anything like that. He doesn't have heightened senses, but he can. I don't think he has any real superpowers other than he can sort of see the future. So he, he goes out to, to stop crimes before they happen or, or, and everything. So, so anyway, that's where it starts off. You kind of see he's reading over the papers and everything. And, and it's, it's Manhunter at large. So he's, he's like known to the public. There's a vigilante out there and everything. And, uh, you know, people are talking about it. We've got sort of this scene at this schoolyard after school. These, they're not school kid age. They're probably, they're probably out of school or whatever, but they're just hanging out playing basketball or whatever. And this drug dealer kind of shows up. And some of, some of the characters are infatuated by him because of the money and everything. And some are like, ah, don't, you know, don't pay attention to that guy. He's bad news. Um, so anyway, so we got there and actually, now that I look at this, um, and I, I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with the lettering back then. I, I, I was, I did pretty good. This is all hand lettered. Um, I, that, that I'm surprised to see. I mean, the artwork itself, uh, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things I would, I would definitely change or do differently. And again, I wouldn't do this kind of story anymore. It's just not my thing. It's a little, uh, I don't know. It's just too on the nose, too kind of derivative. I try to, trying to do something a little different. Plus it was ultra violent, which I'm not, I mean, my comics now, Young and the Dead, Kids vs. Zombies, there's some violence and there's zombies and some horror elements to it, but it's a little more fun and everything. But anyway, so, so this guy, I guess he goes in the back alley, hears some, some noises and wants to know what's going on. Somebody's infringing on his deal or, or, or if there's, you know, whatever is going on. So he goes to investigate and here's our hero kind of in the shadow in the, in the back alley. Um, not a bad sound effect there. And then right here, yeah, so this guy's power, he's got, he's, like I said, he's sort of a cross between Black Panther and Daredevil, but he's got this tail, and the tail, I guess he designed it like Spider-Man designed his web shooters where the tail could, he can 
somehow control the the tail and it whips around and just basically just stabs this guy right through the stomach <laughs> look at that sound effect ah so um yeah i don't know i mean it's uh and you can see and i'm going to show you some different versions of it but i just want to go through this first mini comic first and yeah anatomy not not good i mean it's just like where is this this guy's neck, how long it is, how small his head is compared to, compared to his body and everything. Uh, but, but again, I'm showing you this because I want you to see that there, you can get, just keep at it and you will improve. Um, and then, so basically, I guess how he funds his operation, he just takes the drug dealer's money and then, uh, and then he uses that to fight crime, I guess. Again, this isn't something necessarily that I would do nowadays. But uh, so that's that, that's it. It was just a quick mini comic just to sort of introduce the character. Uh, but uh, anyway, so here's some other things. This is the, this is actually the, like the black and white. This is like the little paste up I did, actual size for printing. Um, kind of found that. And I remember at the time, I don't think I had a computer or anything. I remember going to one of my instructors because I was in, I think I was in college when I did this and uh, having him help me typeset this and everything. And then I pasted it all up and everything. And the, the name of the comic, my comic book company back then was Cool Comics. So not too original, but I did find this stuff here. These are some of the original pages. Now you'll, you'll see back in the day I used to draw something and then I would draw it again and again and that's something I advise against today but but as I look back maybe it was good that I did that because with each pass I did sort of learn and I got better and it shows me it's a way to compare you can sort of see a few differences here between what I ended up going with here and, and this here and uh, just uh, this is like again image with all the cross hatching and things like that and I guess eventually I just started moving away with that one because I didn't think I was very good at the cross hatching. Uh, so I went with more of a, you know, uh, you know, spotting some blacks and, and, and the shadow here isn't great, but that's where I was at this point. And uh, I guess I must, I, I guess I didn't like this window. I got rid of that window here. I'm noticing a uh, little different perspective. I mean, this is, this is where you can start to see some improvement where I've, I sort of get this, it's sort of at a Dutch angle, which is something, but he's just sort of looking out the window where here I've got more of a bird's eye view looking up at this, at this building. And there's the, I remember creating, you know, it was kind of that bat cave building. There's a lot that went to it um, as far as the building he's on. It's like a kind of a Gothic style building and everything. Um, so some changes here, not too many changes there, even though this, I should have changed that because the, yeah, the, the proportions are pretty bad here. We can go into here with another early, uh, let's see, this might be, this is pretty similar. I took out some of the unwanted shading and everything here. Um, getting in, got rid of some of the cross hatchings, tried to move this character. I, I worked a little more on his face and everything, changed it a bit around just to, just to sort of make some improvements here. Uh, and this one is just a total mess. And you can see where, uh, again, all this cross hatching. I did, I, the thing is when you do these techniques like cross hatching, they can look really good if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't look good at all. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just like, oh man, we gotta throw in tons and tons of lines because that's what Todd McFarlane and all these guys are doing. Um, so that's what I did. And, and other things like here, like the, the eyes are too set too close to each other. It just, yeah, there's uh, definitely some issues even with this, this main character. Typically when you draw a face, there should be about uh, one eye shape, uh, size in between your, your own two eyes. So you can fit another eye in between there. Just, just something to think about if you struggle with that, which I certainly did at this point. Um, so, and then here, here's that big spread. I don't know if I can show the whole thing, but so I was doing these at what you would normally do comic book size at. And again, it's just a mess right in here. There's, there's really the, the muscles and everything are just not, I mean, it's a little, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. And it, I just didn't, I didn't really understand it, but that's, but it's all trial and error and you learn as you go. So that's why, you know, keep at it. Just don't, don't give up. And because the, you can see with each iteration, it's going to get a little bit better. Here's that final page here. I noticed, um, oh no, where's that one here? 
Again, a little better on the muscles here. It makes a little more sense. This is it's just, I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to basically, you know, in with the inking stage and everything, I was trying to paint a house that that had bad construction. So you can put as many coats of paint on a, on a house, but if the drywall and the stucco and all that stuff isn't uh, up to par, it's not gonna look good, it's not gonna help. So here, and I think I must have made another version after this. You can see here, I don't have any, like the cover of the first page, but, but even after I did this, I must have went back and, and made some changes. I must have noticed some things here. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit with the face. I ch changed the face around a little on some of these characters. And I don't think I ever got to the inking stage. But uh, but just as I went, I, I was able to, to once I did something, I'm like, well, what can I change? What what's, doesn't look so great here? Looks like I changed the angle of his face a little bit here. It's more of a profile. And uh, that was the big thing that I just thought at the time, I just thought was so great that, you know, sure, he looked a little like Black Panther, but but he has a tail and everything. And then the fact that his jaws came out like that, I'm like, oh, no one has a character like that. So, <laughs> which uh, not, it's uh, looking back, it's like, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, what do you do with that? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, and with each one of these passes, I got a little bit better. Here's a, here, yeah, here's another one. So, did I see, yeah, here's, here's sort of that spread. We'll go back here. Oh, wait, where was that? Where was that? How can I miss it? It's only like four pages. Okay, so, so even after I did this, I went back and I, I, I try to pay a little more attention to the muscles and stuff. You can see where it's just like, what? You know, at least here there's a little more of an effort uh, as far as trying to get the anatomy, getting rid of, again, all the... Do I have the other one here? Let me compare these two here. You know, that being the first pass with all this hatching and just a lot of nonsense. And this may, you know what, this this drawing here may be the same as this one. I may have just went in and cleaned up a little bit. I don't remember exactly because I can't find these actual pages anywhere. So, but you can see the difference here. Just And this, this is, can show you how quickly you can level up. So, if your work isn't where you want it to be, just keep at it because the time that I did this... It probably wasn't even a year later that I redid and did this, and there's considerable difference. I mean, it's still, it's it still needs work, but it's getting better and better, and that's that's the whole point. Uh, so, so yeah. Hopefully, you can kind of see see the difference here and see how how it comes along if you just stick with it. And uh, so, I want to show you where all this came from. Some of my earliest drawings here. So I think this here was my, this is, this is the earliest one that I have. So a little different here, you can see he's got teeth and everything. He, here he's very, very similar to Black Panther, the old Black Panther, recently Black Panther. They check, they've added some things to him. Uh, he's got like some, I think he's got some like, he's got the necklace and stuff. I don't know if he always had that. Uh, but anyway, and here I just kind of to make, to differentiate him a little bit from a Black Panther style character. Again, the tail, but also he's kind of got fur and stuff around his arms, which I don't know what purpose that serves. But originally, I don't know if you can kind of see the outline, Originally, this character was called the Predator, and this is the logo. And just to show you how old I am, I designed this character probably two or three years before the movie, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Predator came out. And at that point, it's like, oh man, because I thought that was such a cool name for a character at the time, a superhero that, to my knowledge, hadn't really been done. Uh, kind of, to me, it rang, it had a similarity to like the Punisher, the Predator, and I really liked that. So. Um, but you know, I had to go and, and change the name because that movie was so popular and that's all people thought of. And, and even when I was still calling it Predator, everyone said, oh, that's like that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I'm like, oh, no, I came up with that first. But <laughs> anyway, so I changed it to Manhunter, but there was also a, a comic called Manhunter. 
Uh, and uh, so it was kind of Manhunter with the title, subtitle Creature of the Night. So I don't know what I would call this character now, if I was going to do keep continue to do him. I don't know. Uh, he's probably in need of a better name. But uh, so that's that's kind of where he came from. That that's my earliest drawing that I could find. And then in high school, I actually worked on. Uh, here's another iteration. So this is a character that was in the back of my mind for a while. And uh, this is all I have. I wish I had some of the original pages because I don't know if you can tell here, but this shading here, I did all this with uh, with like Zipatone, and uh, so I would just lay lay the the the. The half tone sheets down, and I cut it out with an X-Acto knife, and uh, and I did, and it was kind of cool. That's uh, if you watch ca uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe, if you ever watch that channel, they talk a lot about outlaw comics, and this is probably fall into that that category. The ultra violent, black and white, just kind of raw and rugged, and, and a lot of a lot of zip tone, zip tone, and stuff like that. So. And I didn't really know what I was doing. Like here, I just put like, oh, this is the shadow on this part of his face. But um, I didn't really know how shadows fell or anything like that. But but it was it was an attempt at something. So so anyway, the, these are some these are xeroxes of some of these pages. Here you can see where the lettering not that great. So from from high school, I think I did this to college. You can see where at that point I got a little better at, at the lettering. Um, so that's something in, in the artwork itself. And this one kind of, I thought this is funny because, it, you know, I, here's a, I, he's just going to get his costume and <laughs> his way of hiding the costume is behind his other clothes. It's just, I thought that was kind of funny and just trying to make this dynamic pose where he's like throwing open the, the closet, the, the, the clothes and bam, there it is. So something rather mundane, just getting your costume and just the way he stores it is kind of, kind of ridiculous. But, uh, I don't know, maybe that's an ode to like Spider-Man where it's, it's, that's something that Spider, it seems like Spider-Man would have, you know, his, his, you know, his costume just hanging up somewhere in the back or someplace where Aunt May couldn't find it, but probably not, not something like in the bat cave where it's hidden away and everything like that. So, but anyway, so I just wanted to kind of take a trip down, down memory lane, show you this comic and hopefully provide some inspiration. Again, if your work isn't even at this point yet, it's all right. Just stick to it. Keep at it because it's going to get better. You can see the progress and again, once again, in a very short amount of time to, to what, and then, and a long amount of time from back when I was doing this in high school and college to what I can do now, I mean, it's just night and day, but that the only reason is because I've been drawing for so long and doing it. And it is, and that can be discouraging in itself. But one thing I always say is that if you want to be a great artist, it takes patience, practice, and persistence. Uh, all three of those, those things, the three P's I say, um, and if you do that, your work will get better and better and better, and then who knows where you'll be? And you may even be beyond me. I mean, I know when I did this, I did this. Like I said, some of this stuff in college. I seen college students that just like blow this stuff out of the water, and uh, and again, and, and nowadays you have so many tools that I didn't have back then. I think I think if I grew up nowadays, I think I would be a much better artist earlier than I am now because of all the resources on YouTube and everything. Um, and, and so hopefully videos like this are helpful for you, to inspire you, to encourage you to just keep creating, knowing that your stuff's going to get better. Uh, and don't be afraid to save your old stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people throw stuff away. I like to look, at back, look back at it and, and just see how far I've come because why I try to discourage free people from comparing themselves to other artists what I do say is compare yourself to yourself of the past. See how far along you've come, how much better you've got. And uh, this is a good way to do it by saving old stuff. And, and don't be afraid to look at it and, and appreciate it for what it is. Because even though I could look at this and it could be kind of cringy and it could be something I could laugh at uh, at this point in my life, uh, this was this was the best I can do. And... Uh, and I put a lot of work into it, and I'm proud of, of where I was at this point. And I knew that if I just keep going, I get better and better. So that's it. That's my first mini comic.
All right, that is my very first mini comic for what it's worth. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you can see how you can progress as an artist by starting small, starting simple with something like a mini comic and where you can take it because mini comics can be just an entry level thing or you can take it to the next level where you're cutting things out or you're creating little windows or, or even like this one where I've got a noose and a little trap door. You can go as far as you want with mini comics, but it's a great way to start off. And uh, and I just love I love getting mini comics in the mail, especially this one for Frank, such a big supporter of the channel. I'm gonna leave his information in the chat, or not in the chat, but in the description, so you can check that out. Check out his stuff, and uh, I think he's got a coffee account. You could you could support him and everything. Like I said, such a big supporter of the stuff that I do, and it's it's just good to see how far he's come and just and just to imagine where he's going to be in a few years when he keeps at it because he's constantly making comics and I'm all about that. I'm all about constantly making comics, constantly improving your craft and but it starts with just just start at whatever skill level you're at. So start now, start today, start with a mini comic, get rolling and then you're going to be on your way to creating bigger and better things. So that's all I got to talk about today. I'll see you later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.